Hi everyone, my name is Peter Shields and on behalf of AMAP Scientific, I'm pleased to welcome you to today's webinar. We're very fortunate to have Volker Brands, the Regional Sales Manager from Nada Safety Test Solutions in Germany, joining us today to present on radiation and personal safety monitoring for 5G future. With huge public interest around the safety of the rapidly growing 5G network in Australia and other countries, we wanted to get you some background on the potential hazards and how to ensure your safety when working in environments with potentially high levels of radiation. So I'll now hand over to Volker, who's kindly agreed to present on this topic today in the early morning in Germany, so we could host the webinar during Australian business hours. Um, thanks, um, Peter, for the for the brief introduction. For the uh, coming uh, hour or so, I want to focus on a special 5G aspect that is uh, regarding the safety of uh, humans during working on, on, on towers and base station, base station sites. Um, my name is uh, Volker Brands, as, as Peter already uh, introduced me. I'm the uh, regional manager, being responsible also for, for your region. A regional sales manager from from NADA Safety Safety Test Solutions here in Germany. We are uh, situated a little bit south of Stuttgart. So let us directly jump into the presentation. I understood at the end we have a, a question and answer session. The session is split split up into um, into a, let me start with some with basic notes on the safety hazards which uh, which may arise in in your working environment. Then I want to introduce you the latest um, uh, product for personal safety, which is mainly the, the revamped um, good old um, uh, Redman, which we are already selling since um, since a quarter of a century. And then uh, finally, I have a few a few pictures and also a few uh, a few video uh, showing a little bit the the instrument in in action. So uh, so the content will, will be a brief recap on the on the EMF effects on humans. An introduction to personal radiation monitoring, discussing new Redman tools, functions, and features, an overview of set radiation exposure limits and how the Redman tool is optimized for these standards, how human body affects uh, radiation readings, so how the results may be affected if there is incorrect, improper use of, of handling of, of the Redman, how we counter measures to those body effects. Then uh, some applications kept its capacity to protect workers and public. In the annex, I have a few uh, video slides, pictures, and also a little comparison between the, the actual current uh, products we are offering in that in that uh, respect, the Redman 2 and also the NAD Alert S3, which is another alternative, uh, though being more used in the defense um, industry, especially for its capability of um, um, even alarming for signals up to 100 gigahertz and using a slightly uh, different uh, test technique which is which is called uh, thermocouple probes which have the advantage of uh, inherently correctly uh, present um, um, give right results for for highly pulse signals uh, namely namely radar signals an instrument which is a little bit more in the uh, as the, cap the capacity of um, of measuring uh, very very strong fields and as I already said uh, pulsed fields. So let's start with with going back. What are what are the electromagnetic field effects on humans? Um, so we focus today on the on the radio frequency effects, and these effects which are being described are the so-called thermal effects. So we will not discuss about the the stimulus effect. So um, um, induced induced currents, induced voltages for the for the extremely low frequency um, that will not be the topic of the of the lecture of today. So we focus only on the on the on the thermal effects. So and these thermal effects are basically uh, body heating. So um, the, the the red man is designed and uh, is focusing. On the on the electro electrical and magnetical fields and the effect with uh, respect to with respect to body heating. RF radiation heats the body because uh, water molecules begin to to oscillate. So the heating is produced by the by the so-called friction friction losses, and this energy is being absorbed um, by the by the body and depending on the on the di 
dielectric properties of the of the tissue and the result is is a partial or full full body body heating and this is being described by the absorbed power in watts per kg of of body weight which is also called the the SAR value which you probably also know which is the technical spec also of 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 each and any uh, mobile cellular phone and 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 modem not only of the the radiating part of the of the BTSs where we where we focus today on the effect is a little bit is a little bit different so the focus is where you see the the, the triple plus symbols where there is a high absorption rate so most um, most sensitives are the, the the lens of the eye and these are also the most uh, uh, typical injuries which which may happen and this is really reported still from from time to time that this is um, that this is happening that um, workers get effects on uh, in the, in the first instance of uh, of temporarily uh, of, of temporary blindness and of course if you stay too long in a in a um, rf field then uh, this might in the worst case become a permanent thing that that there's permanent blindness this being reported still from from a few rigors in in, in europe i recall a few cases over the last years um, but that is also so happening in, in in war times so we also have a few a few instances from 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 the last war we had in we had in europe the, the, the Jerusalem uh, wars and the, and the Balkan mountains that that people in the winter uh, were warming themselves up in in, in front of uh, radar radar beams and uh, also in 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 that environment it it happens from time to time that you have this so-called uh, clouding clouding of lenses teeth fillings. Uh, is another is another critical is another critical part of of the body. Um, of course, um, implants, but with implants we need to we, we need to uh, differentiate it to into two cases. One is that um, uh, active implants being expected be being affected by uh, uh, non sufficient uh, or too high radiation um, in combination with uh, too sensitive or or ingress into into um, active implants so here we more talk about emc effects electromagnetic compatibility effects rather than emf effects but with metallic so passive implants there is again the, the heating effect kneecaps so basically it's um, the issue with all the parts of the bodies of the body where the temperature cannot quickly and and easily being being um, being distributed uh, so that you have a high dissipation and that you have a local uh, that the heat remains uh, locally in parts of, of of the body and so the combination of high absorption and um, and uh, not fast bringing this heat into other parts of the bodies that is the that is the critical combination um, which may lead to negative effects let's have a look look at the body's absorption curve as a function of frequency so uh, the resonance range is is well within 30 megahertz and uh, 300 megahertz then you have the the hotspot range and um, in the gigahertz the uh, so the higher the frequency basically is the goal of the, the rule of thumb the, the less deep um, the, the the rf will 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 go into your body and you will have more um, effects on, on 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 the surface so with the millimeter waves for example it's it's mainly then then burns on the on the on the skin on the skin of the, of the body and the lower the frequency is um, the more deep the, the thermal effects will will affect your bodies so basically we talk about resonance we talk about body parts limbs and so on which act as lossy antennas and uh, will will pick up will, will pick up the the, the signals Generally, we need to th think of heating, reflexes, influence on cell communication, cell growth, all this being reported, influence on hormone balance, psych, uh, psyche, effect on cardiac pacemakers, we had that on, on passive, non-passive um, implants, weakening of immune system, risk of cancer, 
lens clouding. So that is all discussed. But uh, ultimately, only the, the short-term effects are being proven, are being reported by United Nations, by the um, sub-department, which is called WHO, World Health Organization. And then especially um, what we put here on the bottom of the slide, the ICNIRP, the International Committee for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, which is uh, providing to us um, uh, standards and, and limit curves to deal with these short-term short effects. Again, heating reflexes, effects on cardiac pace, pacemakers, and um, most commonly the, the lens clouding with the effects of um, temporarily or permanent uh, blindness in the worst case. So this risk, of course, with all people which are, which are working in the infrastructure of any, any transmitter stations. So we see point-to-point um, -point, uh, microwave uh, radio links, um, satellite communication, radar, and then, uh, of course, uh, last but not least, the, the, um, the, the, the BTS, the base transceiver station um, towers. So important is uh, to educate workers about the risk from electromagnetic fields, how to detect um, adverse health effects of exposure, how to report them, training to, to have a safe working practice to minimize the risk, um, provision of information about the site, about the radiation sources available there. One possibility is also to use protective clothing, extremely high exposure environment. And last but not least, the topic of today, use a personal monitor to warn against uh, high radiation. Why sh should someone use a personal monitor? It's not always possible to ensure that the exposure of workers is below the occupation exposure limit values. The electromagnetic radiation cannot be felt or heard or tasted. If you feel the consequence, it's usually too late. So, so first effects of, of temporarily blindness, for example. And the personal monitor gives us a way to perceive the RF radiation, to, to display them, to measure them, and which allows us to get out of the danger zone uh, well in time. The personal monitor will also have an RF detection mode. The frequency pitch is altering with the field strength. So you can allow uh, really for a quick check if, if antennas are really turned off. This is increasing safety. That is a special feature and function of the, of the so-called Redman 2 XT model, so the extended version of, of the model, which has a wider frequency range, so which is also covering the, the upcoming millimeter waves for, for, for the higher frequency band in 5G. A personal monitor also displays the level of exposure. This usually allows the radiation source to be localized and the hazard to be better assessed. And last but not least, easy to use, should be easy to use, and it should belong to every set of uh, personal protective equipment. So the Redman 2, so the, around a quarter of a century back, 20, almost 30 years back, where we still were under the brand of uh, Wandel and Goltermann, the first uh, Redman was designed. Now, after 25 years, we decided to, to, to redesign it. And uh, by that, of course, we had the, the chance to, to improve a, a few things. So what you see on this display is uh, the, the sensitivity has been improved. So we added an LED, which is even showing 5% of, um, of power density. Percentage is always, um, is always an integration over the, 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 filtered, the filtered curve in line with the, with the standard, for example, the IC and IRP standard for occupational environment. So on the one hand, uh, NADA extended the range. So the, the, the XT model is, um, is uh, covering the frequency up to 60 gigahertz. So that is well uh, covering all um, microwave radio links. It's covering well the upcoming uh, millimeter wavelength range of, of 5G. So that's the reason why we said it is 5G ready. And um, a couple of new features I want to wanna focus in. The, the first one is a built-in sensor test. Um, I know that uh, many of our users still use an, an, an emitter source to, to make the, the ultimate test of uh, that the, the, the personal monitor is, is working correctly. But we, we digged into, into the history of, of our repair, service, and calibration um, sites. 
and uh, found out that the only few cases and instances where you have where, where errors or malfunctions have been reported are um, are with the with the with the diodes. So you you probably know that this kind of personal monitor consists of uh, of six of six antennas, three dipole diode systems and three uh, dipole coil systems. So um, what what we are testing is the RSS of the RMS value, so the root mean square value, and we do a, a root sum of square of all the three planes x, y, z, so the different planes of the incident possible waves. If the instrument is, is falling down and there is a mechanical failure, then uh, the, the connections on the printed circuit board may get opened in the worst case by a, by a crack. And then these uh, diodes or, or the, the connection will be, will be in open. And that has been checked during the self-test. So when you switch on the instrument, it, it will check that all the six connections to the six antennas are being are being there are being uh, low ohmic. If they are high ohmic and if they are open, then there will be an alarm and the instrument will not work. The, the other instant may happen that you carry or that you expose the instrument to to excessive radiation. Excessive radiation means above above the destruction limit, which is described well described in the data sheet. So if you are in fields which are above the destruction limit, then there is a risk that the, the, the diodes are burning uh, because of, of too high high signals and um, be aware that this is also possible if the instrument or that that will also happen if the instrument is not switched on yeah it has nothing to do if the instrument is switched on or off yeah these diodes might burn then in the worst case if it's above destruction limit and then again the diode if the diode is burned you will have an open and um, again this uh, this open connection is being checked during the boot phase of, of the instrument. So um, we would expect that more than 99% of all these instances will be covered by this, by this uh, internal check. But of course, you can still carry on with, with your good old method um, that you use a whatever a garage door opener or walkie-talkie or whatever emitter and, and do a real functional test over the, over the air. The display is the same as with the, with the, with the, with the elder models. Uh, we have this patented shaping, which displays the result directly in percentage of limit value, which is always a power density, so it's not the field strength, but the, but the square out of that, so it's the power density. You need no convergence, no settings, and it's directly according to ICMRP, to the, in, in Europe, the European Workers uh, Directive. In the US, the, the, the FCC um, shaping, or in Canada, the safety code six, so, so, so which are the major limit curves which we, which we find globally. We increase the loudness of, of the alarm, so you hardly can miss any alarm, but we know that customers are very open, often in, in, in very noisy, not very noisy environment. That means on the, on the roofs of, of the uh, skyscrapers, we typically have the towers, you have the AC conditioners, so you you have probably the, the the noise from the from from the roads, which are reflected up up to the to the uh, top of the buildings. So so we thought it's a good idea to to increase the loudness of the alarms. But secondly, we also increase the angle of the of the red LED light display. It's it's 270 degrees, so you can really see it from from an extremely wide uh, angle if you if you look from the on, on the top of the of the instrument and last but not least now also including including a, a vibration alarm so you have these these three alarms if uh, the um, limit is being ex exceeded and then um, by the law or, or, or by the standards you still have uh, six minutes times to to get out of the uh, um, radiation hazard zone if it uh, indicates the the hundred percent, because that is based on a hundred percent, or on a six minute on a six minute integration time, so where you have the maximum absorption of of energy and the maximum heating effect. Thirdly, also the frequency range has been has been extended, so we we have a, a lower cost version, the Redman 2 LT, the light version, 
which um, covers the frequency range from 50 megahertz to 8 gigahertz and being also calibrated for that. And then for to make it 5G ready, we also uh, offer the, the extended version, the Redman 2 XT, which is covering all along the frequency range from 900 kilohertz up to up to 60 up to 60 gigahertz. As I already indicated, both the, the, the electrical field and the magnetic field is, is being checked. That is in in line with the standards and other differences are not only the frequency range but also the, the data logger which is extended in the extended version so instead of uh, around 3000 events it, it will lock 100,000 events signal detection is root mean square and as, as a fourth differentiator the XT version also allows to have a, a shorter integration time of 30 milliseconds this is used for, for two cases. On the one hand, if you have in the vicinity also radar equipment, then you get an earlier alarming as per the standards. And secondly, we have also integrated the so-called RF detection mode, which is also working with a, with a faster, with a 30 millisecond integration time, so that you can really locate the source, and the emitter, and the, and the antenna segment uh, with the RF detection mode. For the sake of, of time, we already have used half of the time. I will, uh, I will speed up a little bit, uh, but anyhow, you will, you will get a copy of each and any slide by, uh, provided by AirMed. So the detection modes, which we offer with the XT model in, in the new Redman, is, 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 is the normal detection mode or the pulse detection mode with the faster with a, with a faster, shorter integration time. Instead of one second, um, you can select 30 milliseconds so that you are well uh, being alarmed fast enough if there is any uh, pulsed signal like radar. Protection, of, all, of course, also covers people which are not so much involved in, uh, so which are not um, technicians or, or engineers. Uh, could be also instruction people or painter people or, or visitors. For those, we also offer an LT version for, for the more sensitive general, general public limits. With the detection mode, you have an easy localization of, of, le of leakages in, in, in waveguides, coaxial screw connectors. Check if antennas or antenna segments are switched on or off. And with the stone search, you can also quickly de detect any leaks by these varying pitch of tone. I have a little I prepared a little a little video which is um, which is easily um, uh, presenting presenting this this mode. We also expanded the hours of operation, which is now 800 hours. So, so basically, you don't need to charge the um, the accumulators more than than three times per year, and uh, you, you you have covered you have covered um, the, the normal working hours of, of whatever, eight, eight, hours, eight hours per day. It's rechargeable via, via the USB port, so it's just a standard USB-C interface, which you all know from your, from your mobile or, or smartphones. The instrument is, is protected or is, is rated with ingress protection 665, so it's, it's dust tight and it also can, uh, can cope with, uh, with water, with water jets. A little comparison about the two available models we have today on the market, the Redman 2 and the NAD Alert S, S, S3. So all of these models um, are more or less presenting, presenting alarms. What I want to show here is the, 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 the optical alarm, which is being visited, visible by the Redman 2 and the NAD alert. Yeah. So um, by wearing it at, at your body, you can look from, from the top by looking down to the, to, to the, to the um, alarm sensors. You see with the, with the uh, red man and the NADA alert and only with these two models if we compare them to, to the other models being available on the market only these two models um, are really uh, facing the, the, the display um, and or the, the, the LED 
presentation to your face if you um, would use them in the in the in the in the normal in the normal way. In addition to that, the Redman, like the old world, the, 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 the incumbent version, the Redman 1, comes with an integrated absorber, which is avoid over and under estimations. The human body acts like a reflector to electric fields, so you, you don't want to have either or, either an overestimation nor an underestimation. And um, any electric field probe worn close to the, to the body, like a personal monitor, is affected by those reflections if no countermeasures have been taken. Uh, these reflections can cause strong over and underestimation if the incident field is, is 100 degrees out of phase of the reflected field. The value can, in the worst case, be completely cancelled cancelled out. So, so an addition of, of waves with a with a with a with a complementary or the or the or the, um, um, the 180 degrees changed phase, or if it's in phase, the reflected field will double the value. So, so you neither want to have uh, plus or minus 100% measurement uncertainty. So the measurement results from units which are worn on the body without absorber material are have a very high likeliness that they are not that they are not um, accurate. So in the in the holder there is foam which is like the material which you know from from uh, EMC shielded uh, rooms. It is, it is absorbing, it is absorbing the body back reflection and hence you will get, um, you will you will get correct uh, readings um, if, you, um, if you use that on the, on the body. In contradiction to that, if you take it out of the mounting adapter, um, then you have the full isotropic. Isotropic means um, uh, test results which are, um, which are not affected by the, by the direction. You get a three-dimensional um, isotropic correct reading if you take the instrument out of the mounting adapter. So these are the, the two models, the NAD alert and the uh, and the Redman, um, with the with the difference that the that the NAD alert is using a thermocouple array and can produce true RMS values even up to up to 100 gigahertz, and it's mainly usable for strong radar fields which are typical in, in defense in defense and, and environment. The downside or the or the limitation of, of the NAD alert is a is a lower dynamical range. Yeah. So uh, inherently the technology of using dipole diodes and coil diode system is a is a much higher dynamical range. And uh, the downside of that instrument is also that it has a lower lower sensitivity. So for example we don't offer general public models here, we only offer um, the models with the, with the higher limit curves for, for occupational safety. So both have inherently built in the, 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 the limit curves. So the test results you get is always an integration, an integration over the whole frequency range of the, of the power density with a correction according to the frequency dependent limit curves for example, of IC and IRP. So you have no risk of misunderstanding or, or misreading and you always have uh, by that a maximum of safety by, by simple uh, presentation of values in percentage of the, of the standard. A PC software is, is, is available. Those of you who are already using uh, users of, of, of NBM that is based on, the, on, on our broadband um, NADA broadband meter software. It's a it's a full full database uh, where you have access to all the all the results which you can upload via USB to your to your PC and can set up uh, different averaging methods and so on. It's also good for for a functional test because um, uh, you also have a real time um, measurement function here so that you see the curves in real time. Um, of the three magnetic sensors and the three electric sensors separately, so you can check the functionality also of of the of, of the probe systems um, divided by electric and magnetic fields. Okay, I don't want to go too much into details. You find that all on our homepage on in the data sheet of the Redman at, um, version, the respective version, the light version, the LT, and the extended version, the XT, as well as the the NAD alert um, instrument. So they all offer opti optical, acoustical, and vibration 
alarm indication. And Redman offers isotropic measurement. If you take it out of the, 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 the holder, um, it, it will um, take into consideration the effects of, of body reflection. If you wear it correctly at the, at the body, the sensors are dipole diodes and dipole coils. In the NADA alert case, it is, it is uh, dipole diodes for the lower frequency and uh, roughly above two gigahertz, the thermocouple principle is used. Okay, before we come to question and answer sections, I just want to show you a few, uh, a few pictures and, uh, and a brief uh, video. So what you see here is a is a recent uh, measurement I've I've done in in uh, in Scandinavia. It's a it's a Huawei it's a Huawei five five G um, BTS and antenna. Um, most likely that like like a lot of installations. Um, um, the uh, the traffic is not full load. That's the reason why you only see five to ten percent of uh, of um, radiation, even 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 in front of the uh, even in front of the the, the antenna. Uh, so that was a three point seven gigahertz five uh, G uh, Huawei installation where we probably just um, measured the uh, the broadcast signal and not so much of 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 traffic. Furthermore, a, a quick video showing you the sensor fail test if you switch on the instrument. So if, if there is a failure, the instrument will not measure, will not measure, it will, will provide constant alarms. All LEDs are, are flashing. Uh, and it's uh, impossible then to, uh, to operate the unit because it's, it's, just not, it's, just, it's just not further booting and not, not starting. So you can be 100% secure if, if, there's a, if, if there is a fail in the instrument, the failure in the instrument in these six sensors, if there is an open, an open circuit. Contrary to that, a successful booting process looks like that. You get a quick, quick functional test that all the LEDs are working. Then you see the battery tests, now 100%. Battery is 100% full. Um, so, and, um, and of course, the, work, the unit is, is, is working if there is any, any um, RF field. Max hold is another interesting, interesting function. So especially if, if, if you put it on a long rod and you want to measure antennas in a distance, in a distance. Um, if there is, if there is nothing stored, then you just see these, LED, these LEDs running from, from top to the bottom. Uh, but after it has detect a signal, that then you can always just press on the, so it's a complete one key button operation. You just press once on the key. And then here in that case, the 50% um, field detection is being, <clears throat> it's being stored forever. Last but not least, I want to show you this uh, quite unique RF detection, detection mode. <clears throat> so you see, in 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 that case, the instrument is is set to the to the pulse mode. So you see in the XT model uh, on the bottom in the, in the center, the red LED, which shows that the integration time is now 30 times faster. So instead of uh, one second, the integration time is now reduced to, to three milliseconds. That is good for radars. But of course, that's also good if you use the RF detection mode, um, that it's immediately, it's immediately showing, um, uh, presenting um, with, with this frequency pitch, it's directly presenting uh, in, in, in real time an indication of, of an RF emitter um, and you can easily locate it uh, where, where it is in, in X and, and Y direction. Okay, that's all for the moment. And, um, now I would like to hand over to uh, Peter to um, moderate the, the question and answer session.
Firstly, are there plans of calibrating in Australia? That's a question for you or for me? Yeah, well, it's, I suppose it's for you. Um, not, in the, not in the short term, we have looked into it before, mm -hmm. but yeah, they, it could be possible in future. Uh, the calibration frequency, I imagine, is the same as the Radman, so that would be every three years. Mm -hmm. uh, when will the, the Radman 2XT model be available? Uh, and I can answer that one as well because Volker told me earlier that the first ones will be shipping sometime in July. So, um, yeah, probably July, August, I believe that the, there's orders for quite a number already. So if you haven't got one on order at the moment, uh, it might not be July, but perhaps August, September. I've got a, another one here, Volker, you might be able to answer. Hi. Have there been any other 5G field tests other than the brief one in Sweden? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so there have been some, a few, uh, not only in Scandinavia, but also at your uh, lovely Gold Coast. We, we had, uh, we did a couple of, of, um, of measurements uh, over the last, uh, over the last, uh, in the last month. Is that correct? May, yeah, in in middle of middle of May, there have yeah. been uh, quite some extensive tests in, in um, at your uh, at your in, 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 at the Gold Coast area with uh, mainly with uh, Telstra, if I remember correctly, um, and also these uh, these tests. Uh, there have been also some some benchmarking tests with the with the with the older red man. And uh, despite of the, uh, the, the the fact that the new Redmond is a little bit more sensitive, so it already starts with, with the detection of five percent of of, of ICNIR, it behaved uh, in the in in praxis it behaved um, identical to the to the old to the old Redman and so it was also um, reconfirming and um, verifying that the that the design is is is, is being made just just in line what we. What we what we have um, done with the with, for the last um, thirty years with the with the former version of the of, of the Redman. Um, currently, in instruments the, the first working prototypes instrument are shipping to 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 basically all places of the in the in the world to the to the manufacturers to the vendors to the to the operators. No matter if it's in China with, with Huawei or. Uh, I visited personally um, Ericsson uh, two weeks two weeks back. I visited uh, some operators in Scandinavia, like 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 Telia in, in Norway, and um, all, all all the tests which we made so far give a give a hundred uh, percent reconfirmation that that the design is is being is being as per as as per the the the, the, uh, the specifications. Yeah. Thanks, I've got another question. Uh, when will the Radman 2XT operating manual and software be available? Yeah, as, as, as we speak, the operation manual is just being translated now into, into English. So the, the German is, is already there. So we finalized that. So it's just a matter of, of, of translation. I think it, yeah. will, be, it will be online, uh, not in weeks, but probably in, in, in days. On the uh, sales extranet, that means that that Airmed has uh, will have very soon uh, access to the to the operation manual. Yeah. Then, of course, we are happy that you distribute it to to interested customers. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'll pass that on as soon as it's available. Mm -hmm. um, another question: are, are other countries more advanced with five G, and are there any significant expo exposure threats from those with experience? Um, no, from my experience, no. But I need to uh, restrict um, this this assessment a little bit to the fact that uh, there's not so much uh, beam forming around so far. So most of the most of the trials, uh, the the broadcast beams and the and the and the um, traffic beams are still are still same. So. Um, um, there has not been made so much of 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 tests with the with the with the beam forming. 
so that would that would create in the, in the worst case um, a little bit higher a little bit higher exposure than, than what we have in the past but as I already said that um, most of the systems I've seen so far the broadcast beams and the traffic beams are still same same so there is not a lot of beam forming around and there is not a lot of a lot of traffic so far around um, but also the, the measurements from 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 Telstra where there have been quite quite real world scenario scenarios have been have been made so with um, if i remember correctly in the order of of 50 50 um, enabled up to 50 enabled um, systems working in in, in parallel uh, the exposure rate with with these systems currently being placed is is, is not is not uh, is not showing any significant um exposure over or more than 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 what we know from from past 2g 3g uh, 4g systems yeah yeah i think um we've got a comment here from graham down from telstra just to add to that i suppose it uh the telstra gold coast measurement showed 5g levels well below 4g the base stations don't activate full power unless necessary hmm. what's the battery working to time under full load the, the operation time is, is, is 800 800 hours yeah um, so that is uh, yeah 100 100 working days a quarter a quarter of a year so again what I what I showed in the slides uh, um, minimum three maximum four recharging cycles per year uh, is su sufficient so that so that you can run that um, Redman to um, yeah almost yeah. Uh, continuously over 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 quarter of a year yeah okay based based on eight hours based on eight hours working day yeah yeah okay, and another question Volker will Nada be publishing any application notes for five G measurements using NBN and SRM yeah first of all um, we just finished uh, um, the first the first 5G um, presentation on, on on the SRM, uh, which we which we already discussed today, uh, Peter. That that could be very likely that the next webinar in uh, in um, in four to six weeks or so, focusing on uh, selective measurement in, in frequency domain. Um, measurement in time domain of, of the 5G signal with an with an, with a selective radiation meter with the with the SRM. Um, so and that could be of course also a basis then for for a, for a white paper or, or an application note um, um, coming up later later this year. Yeah, that's actually a good idea there. Okay, thanks very much, Volker. That looks to be the conclusion of the questions. Mm -hmm. So. I think thanks everyone for attending today. I'm sure you found it informative and interesting. If you've got any further questions on the NADA product range or anything that was discussed today, feel, please feel free to contact any of your AirMet representatives. Finally, thanks Volker for your time today. Very informative and interesting presentation and I'm looking forward to the future webinars with you. So yeah. thank you very much. Thanks for arranging Peter and thanks to the audience. Thanks and bye.